try a few different laptops <clears throat> to see how much radio no the noise they generate at around 14 megahertz, which is a favorite band I like to listen to. And it's interesting to know how much of the inf interference is radiated into the antenna and how much is conducted through the USB port. So what I've done is I've uh, unpacked my Lenovo laptop graveyard. Um, what's that? That's a T470S, <clears throat> which is quite light. And that's a, a X260, which is also quite light and smaller. And you'll notice a big difference between these with noise performance. And this is a V130, which is a like a consumer cheaper version with a very plastic case. You've already seen in one of my other videos. And I'm comparing the noise on this X6100. Chosen a fairly quiet frequency where there are no signals around. And as you've already seen in one of my videos, if I touch the trackpad on this computer, then noise appears. And it turns out that the noise is not being radiated into the loop antenna that I'm using. It's actually been conducted along the USB cable. And I already demonstrated using a cable with RF blocking and how that helps to reduce the noise. So if I can hold the camera still, put the finger on the trackpad and there you see the noise increase. Quite a big difference. Large increase in noise, which is quite nasty. If I unplug this USB connector, then when I put my finger on and off, well, the noise still appears. That's interesting. It wasn't doing that the other day, so now it is. So it is radiated as well as conducted. So all I'm doing is putting the finger on and off the trackpad on this computer, which happens to be running Windows. I'm sure that's not the problem. Well, that's interesting now. Let's just, just um, try unplugging this cable. Maybe the cable there is radiating. Let's see what happens. And it's made it even worse, <laughs> putting the finger on and off. So the noise is actually being radiated after all, not just conducted. Although when I put the uh, the laptop away from the receiver antenna, now when I touch the trackpad, the noise is not going up and down. So there's a radiated component to the noise and also a conducted component through the USB port. So that's my... Uh, the Novo V130. Let's put that to one side and try these other laptops. This is um, X260, <clears throat> which is far more solidly built. It doesn't bend when you pick it up. And putting it in front of the antenna and there's very little extra noise being generated. And if I touch the trackpad, there's a little something popping up. I can hear it more than see it. That little peak that's popping up and down is coming from this laptop. Interesting. So all I'm doing again is just touching the trackpad on and off and looking at the received noise on the X6100. I'm just wondering if that's actually a, a genuine signal that's popping up and down there and not anything to do with my finger. Now I'm confused. Seems to be only there when I put my finger on. So it probably is a little spurious component there. I'm wondering if it's FD8 transmissions. And what happens if I plug in the USB cable, I wonder, to look for conducted noise. Let's put this in the USB port. I'll put the other end into the USB port on the radio, the dev port, which is here. This is not easy with one hand. Sorry about the wobbly camera. And now I'm going to try putting my finger on the trackpad again, on and off. Yeah, it makes the same kind of difference that it made before. <clears throat> I still think that might be a signal that's coming from somewhere else. Let's try tuning the radio up there. Oh no, it is coming from the trackpad. <laughs> Interesting. So there's a little spurious signal there, which only pops up briefly and then goes down again when I touch the trackpad. 
So you can't even use this for sending CW. Never mind. So now I'm going to unplug that uh, USB cable before I pick up the laptop and then try the third one that I want to show you. And that one, we'll see what happens. So this is a uh, T470S with an i7 processor. Let's put this close to the antenna. And I want to tune my receiver to the same frequency I had before, which is 14. Oh, whoa, did you see that? <laughs> 14 decimal 069. There was a big birdie went all the way down the band. And I think that came from that laptop. It's the worst one for noise that I own. So it's 14.069, which is where we started. And all of those little spikes in the frequency spectrum are coming from that laptop. When I move it away, they go away. And now I'm putting it back. And you can hear the audio probably. So it's radiating signals all the way across the spectrum. Let me just try touching the trackpad, see if the noise changes. Not really. If anything, the noise gets less when I touch the trackpad. So this one is, is not reading broadband noise, it's more um, uh, spurious carriers. I was going to use an optical term there. So let's plug in the uh, USB port, see what happens. Where is the USB port on this one? Here. Maybe the other way up. No, it sounds the same. Looks the same, so there's not so much USB noise coming through here. When I touch the trackpad now, you can see some, some noise floor going up and down. But it's not as uh, bad as the, the V130 laptop again because this this one is a better metal construction inside but uh, it has all these spurious signals coming out of it um, yeah so there we are I'm going to have to choose which computers I'm going to use for which kinds of frequencies and what kinds of uses but I think the T470 is not going to get used for radio purposes probably I'll stick with the uh, the other ones I do have a, a bigger laptop that's quiet but I'm not going to hold it in one hand because I was getting arm ache. So that's it for now. Let's see what happens next. I'm going to switch over to using a different receiver with the same antennas. The receiver is going to be the um, RSP DX from SDR Play. That's this SDR receiver here which I really like and um, seems to be very sensitive and very nicely behaved and what I'm doing is I'm looking at it on the bigger computer with um, the SDR Uno, which is the recommended software to use with that receiver. And again, looking at the 14 megahertz band, tuned to 14.068, where the red line is. Um, so what I'm gonna do is try the laptops again near the antenna. So starting with this X260, that's, um, I think I'm gonna to have to change hands here. <laughs> so uh, let's put this close to the antenna and try to film the screen of the receiver to see what happens. As I get closer, that's what happens. There's a little bit more noise. I'm putting my finger on the trackpad. Now you can see those peaks appearing. Spurious signals from the trackpad and I take the finger away, they go away. And the noise floor is uh, not changing too much. Let's take the laptop away again. There's a, a slight grinding issue, that's why the noise goes up when I take away the laptop, which is the opposite to what you'd expect. Let's try a different one now. That was the quietest laptop with the last receiver. This one was the worst laptop, the one with the most noise output, the T470S. So let's make sure it doesn't go to sleep. So I'm going to put that close to the antenna now whilst watching the spectrum display. Wow. And now you can see what comes out of that laptop. A huge amount of noise, a lot of very closely spaced peaks, looks horrible. And if I touch the trackpad on this one, then you see some bigger peaks, those two bigger peaks popping up, radiation from the trackpad. So that's um, the worst laptop again, using this receiver as well for noise. Quite shocking. Let's put that away now. Take it away from the antenna. I'm going to put it over here, far enough away that it can't. Uh, interfere with the results from the next laptop, the last one, which is this 
plastic V130 from Lenovo. Let's put that near the antenna loop and see what happens. You can see the history of the last one still there. When I place this laptop here, you see you get some spikes in the spectrum again. Spaced further apart, probably due to the lower clock frequency or something like that. There are plenty of them. If I touch the trackpad, then again, those uh, spurious signals appear. They're a bit more like noise than pure carriers, but they are quite nasty again. So the um, the quietest laptop from that experiment, using this apparently more sensitive receiver, is this X260. <clears throat> I've done similar things with this big T570, and that is also as quiet as this one. But my arm's aching, so I'm not going to try and pick it up and move it around with one hand. So these are the quietest too, so these are the ones I'm going to use for uh, further experimentation. So let's see what happens next. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I can't resist the temptation to try the uh, the big heavy T470S, which I've now placed next to the loop antenna to see what kind of noise that comes out. These laptops, by the way, they're all running Fedora, except for the one running Windows 10. So let's have a look at what's on the screen. And goodness me, there's a fair amount of noise and some signal peaks. You can see those in the spectrum. I'm going to pick it up and move it with one hand. Whoa move it away and you see that uh, the signal level goes down quite fast. Some of them you can move a meter or two away, these laptops, and still see the, the spurious signals. So I'm going to put it back next to the antenna again. That's quite heavy, it weighs at least double what any of the others weigh. Now I'm going to touch the trackpad, see what comes up. Oh, look at that. Those pulsing signals appear quite strong. No, I'm not touching the trackpad. No, I am. So you can see there's uh, and you can hear it perhaps, some burbling interference from the frequency I'm listening to. So it's not the best, but it's also not the worst. So definitely the small X260, which is the oldest laptop, is also the quietest um, in terms of RF interference. So that's enough for now. Let's see what happens next. And last thing to add is that I've been looking at noise <coughs> coupling between the computer and the receiver on the USB cable and, and playing with RF chokes like this one. Sure, you will know about these ferrite chokes that can be clipped around a cable. And I've discovered something that's quite useful, and that is that um, if you keep the uh, ferrite inside here and clip this on, how it's designed to be used, it doesn't really work too well. What I've discovered is that um, I need to take the ferrite out of the plastic case and then push it together far more firmly. And if you look at the noise being received here on 14 megahertz. Um, the RSPDX receiver is connected to that same loop antenna again. And uh, now I'm going to try to apply some pressure to this RF choke. And you'll see how the noise goes up and down. Right now, there's only half of the, um, the ferrite there. Now I've got the, um, the two halves of ferrite around this cable with two turns or two and a half turns of USB cable. You can see there's a small gap there. And when the ferrite choke is in the plastic case, the gap doesn't really get closed. I have to squeeze it hard to close it. And if we look at the noise on the spectrum display, when I squeeze those two halves together hard, boom, goes down by about four or five dBs. So that's not squeezing, and that is squeezing. So like a four or five dB reduction in noise, which is very useful. Um, so what I've done is I've discarded the uh, plastic casing because it doesn't really do the job how I want it and what I do is to just put some sticky tape some um, strong gaffer tape in fact around those two halves squeeze them together and then tightly stick them together and then I get the desired suppression of noise which I don't get if I use the uh, plastic case that comes with these ferrite chokes so that's something that's worth knowing about and as many turns as possible around here of course helps as close as possible to the source of noise so that's it for now. Next video will be about something else.